Okay, so in our last video, we talked about eutrophication and human impact on ponds and lakes due to sewage and fertilizers, technically a type of water pollution. So I'm going to move on to pollution next. That makes sense. So there are three types of pollution, pollution of the water, the air and the land. Now, land pollution can include things like litter and fly tipping. Also things like landfill. So all the bin bags that you throw away, if you don't recycle, end up in a big hole under the ground. And what can happen is chemicals from that, that waste can pass eventually into water systems as well. Fly tipping is where people just dump their waste in a country lane, you know, um, old bed mattresses, things from the garden, and general litter. So that's all types of land pollution. Air pollution, we know quite a lot about. We talked about climate change due to carbon dioxide. And the main problem with that, of course, is burning fossil fuels. There are other things as well in terms of air pollution you probably come across in the past. Things like sulfur dioxide, uh, which actually can lead to acid rain. So when we burn fossil fuels, we don't just release carbon dioxide, we actually release the sulfur that's trapped in the coal, the oil and the gas. And that forms sulfur dioxide, which when it interacts with the water in the atmosphere, forms acids like, acids like sulfuric acid, which can cause their own problems. Now, I want to spend most of my time on water. So we talked in the last session about the impact of sewage and fertilizers on ponds and lakes. And we were introduced to that new term, eutrophication. Now, there are other things that farmers add to their land. For example, pesticides. Now, pesticides kill off pests, insects, so they don't want insects all over their crop. So they spray the fields full of pesticides, kills the insects off, great. However, what happens is when it rains, that's going to wash some of those pesticides into rivers and lakes and streams. And the pesticide chemicals are going to end up in the water system. So a good example of this is DDT. DDT, DDT is now a banned pesticide. It was commonly used in the 60s, 70s, early 80s. And what happened is the DDT ended up in the rivers and streams, but ended up as quite a low level. So let's say, for example, I don't know, 100 ppm in insects. So what happened is the DDT was at a low level in the insects. PPM stands for parts per million. But what happened is, as those insects were eaten by larger animals, things like small fish, the level of the DDT actually accumulated, it built up. What happened then when it got into some of the predatory birds, you may have heard of the peregrine falcon was an endangered species the level of the pesticide accumulated again because as the peregrine falcon ate the fish the more fish it ate the more the chemical built up it stayed in the body of the falcon now this process here this building up this accumulating of the pesticide is known as bioaccumulation So as it bioaccumulated, it damaged the falcon. It became toxic in the falcon and actually damaged the eggs. So the eggs basically were very fragile. The eggs shell were thin. A lot of the chicks wouldn't survive. So the peregrine falcon population crashed. But since it was banned, the falcon population has recovered. So that's pollution, guys. Thank you.